Bapak Rifai Ahsan. Thank you, Pak Rifai. And uh, the, all the lecturers, students, and all the participants of uh, our joint seminar today. Uh, first of all, let's ask give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us health and opportunity so that we can attend this uh, today even. Salam, salawat, and salam we give to our uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, and the family. Uh, okay, I'm nervous. <laughs> Okay, I think uh, this seminar is the first uh, international seminar uh, for all the students in uh, biology education department with the theme in uh, the the theme is in line with our vision. Climate change is something that we feel the impact of uh, right now daily. The shifting of season and natural disaster are the example of climate change impact for us. Efforts must be made to prevent it because as humanity we must maintain sustainable life. Jadi adik-adik semua masalah perubahan iklim itu masalah yang harus kita hadapi bersama gitu ya. Jadi uh, dalam acara hari ini kita dapat berdiskusi bersama mendengarkan paparan dari Mr. Thomas dan juga Pak Irfan untuk kita mengulas masalah ini. Uh, Biology Education Department, Universitas Amadelan is very concerned about this because it's in line with our vision of developing environmental based learning and technology with eco pedagogical approach based on Islamic values for the welfare and mankind. Jadi tema ini sangat sesuai, in line dengan visi kita untuk mengembangkan pembelajaran berbasis lingkungan dan teknologi dijawai nilai-nilai islami untuk kemaslahatan umat manusia. Jadi harapannya acara ini memang benar-benar memperkuat uh, pemahaman kita tentang visi prodi kita. We welcome to Mr. Thomas and thanks for uh, your uh, time today for our uh, joint seminar who has been willing that uh, join the be uh, speaker in this event today. Okay, I think uh, welcome to Yogyakarta, Mr. Thomas, the cultural and the student university in Indonesia. Welcome to Campus 4, Universitas Ahmad Dalan. I hope you, uh, we will make uh, another collaboration, uh, maybe in uh, research collaboration or uh, publication collaboration or maybe student exchange. Ada ada mau nggak ke Filipin? Mau ya yeah, ya. Yeah. Mungkin besok kita akan mengadakan pertukaran pelajar. Jadi harus pinter bahasa Inggris. Jangan seperti saya ini ya. Jadi masih apa ya? Karena jarang digunakan itu kadang-kadang ngomongnya masih belibet gitu ya. Oke, okay, lastly, uh, I will thanks to the uh, Mr. Ir, uh, Indro Prastowo, Pak Indro, yeah, and all the committee, Mbak Nafa, Mas Habibi, Mas Arbi, and all the committee that uh, bisa mengadakan acara ini dalam waktu singkat dengan sangat baik. Okay, thanks to all, thanks to all for attend this uh, our event today. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much for Dr. Novi Febrianti, MSI. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now we move to the next agenda. Is welcome speech from Mr. Muhammad Sayuti, MPD, MINI, PhD as the Dean of the Faculty of Teacher Training and Education, Ahmad Dalan University, and open the event. Now, we invite Mr. Muhammad Saiti, MPD, MD, PhD, to give a second speech to Mr. Muhammad Saiti, MPD, MD, PhD. Time is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah wa syukrulillah wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah 
Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yaumiddin First of all I want to extend warm welcome to our guest Mr Thomas Diquito PhD candidate our respected guest from University of Mindanao Adigos Adik-adik tahu enggak Mindanao? Hah? Belum pernah ke sana? Sama berarti ya. <laughs> Mindanao itu di Filipin Selatan. Jadi kalau mau ke Bunaken dekat. Apalagi kalau biologi biasa berenang ya, dari Bunaken berenang ke Mindanao. Swimming from uh, North Sulawesi to Mindanao. <laughs> Thank you also for biology education, uh, Dr. Novi, and then lecturers, Prof. Triani, yeah, Prof. Irfan, Amin, yeah, then uh, all the lecturer and student of biology education of Ahmad Dahlan. Kita sangat senang pada pagi hari ini karena UAD sebagai kampus besar di Yogyakarta, Indonesia bisa menyelenggarakan join seminar. Ini bagian dari kedatangan mahasiswa dari Filipina also beberapa kali ke sini untuk program Sea Teacher. C itu bukan C, you see me ya, or I see you. Southeast Asia Teacher Exchange, jadi teman-temanmu ada yang mengajar di Filipin dan di Thailand, dan ada juga mahasiswa dari Filipin datang ke Jogja untuk pengalaman mengajar di sini. Saya kira ini sangat penting adik-adik, karena itu tantangan Bu Novi tadi penting untuk disambut. Banyak gini yang bisa ngajar dalam bahasa Indonesia saya kira banyak ya tapi kalau ngajarnya bahasa Inggris gimana pede nggak ah belum pede ya padahal masa depan adik-adik itu tidak di Jogja tidak di Kulon Progo di Bantul ya masa depanmu itu di tempat-tempat yang jauh pernah saya sampaikan Australia sedang kekurangan guru dan gajinya sebulan itu Berapa? Kalau 70 ribu setahun, sebulan berapa? 6 ribu dolar, 60 juta sebulan. Gaji rektor aja kalah ya. Nah, apalagi gaji dekan. <laughs> Jadi sed Australia sedang shortage, ya sedang, sedang butuh guru, banyak sekali yang butuh, dibutuhkan. Sementara di Indonesia kurang atau lebih? Eh? Ya kalau ke Papua kurang banyak, kalau ke IKN kurang banyak. Jadi jangan cari jadi guru di Bantul ya, di kampungnya Bu Novi sana di Jambi atau di Kalimantan atau di Papua kebutuhannya masih banyak. Ya, jadi kesempatan untuk belajar ya. Nanti kalau Pak Irfan presentasinya Pak Thomas in English berapa persen yang bisa ditangkap? Kalau saya deliver masih in English nggak bisa guyu toh, nggak bisa tertawa ya, nggak nggak tahu lucunya di mana ya. Karena itu sekali lagi anggap ini pemanasan ya, adik-adik sebelum nanti masuk ke dunia global yang ada di hadapan anda. So our respected guest UAD UAD is one of the hundred and seventy two. University or tertiary institution under the Muhammadiyah, the thing we sang uh, recently. So this is one of 172. Uh, we have around 56 department in this campus with student around 25,000. Yeah, 25,000 and mostly paying uh, paying the tuition, yeah, not free lah. Yeah, jadi adik-adik bayar SPP kan? Ya, adik-adik kasih makan kita ini bu ya. 
<laughs> so we be, we established in 1960. So around 63 years old now, and then uh, this is the one of the six campuses. So when you going to the airport, you will see again another another campus in your life on the way to airport. So welcome to Jogja, welcome to Ahmad Dahlan. Uh, Jogja is educational hub. So people, students all over Indonesia coming to Jogja for study. So when you stay in Jogja, you you may find our student from Papua with quite dark skin, also people from Aceh, people from Kalimantan, all over Indonesia. So, insya Allah, visiting Jogja is sufficient to see Indonesia. Yes, because we are educational hub. Uh, been long time ago since the independence of Indonesia. So, welcome to Jogja and then expecting to have closer collaboration in the future between pendidikan biologi, educa biologi education, also University of Mindanao, as mentioned by Dr. Novi, lecturer exchange. So we are waiting for your invitation. Invitation with the ticket or no? <laughs> no, I think Mr. Irfan, invitation is enough because uh, he can find another financial support from Ahmad Dahlan or from other sources. So we are looking forward for invitation, also expecting that our student can come to your university also, because Mindano is close. Jadi di Filipina itu adik-adik banyak bahasanya yang mirip sama bahasa Indonesia. Ya, termasuk number. Jadi angka itu banyak mirip ya. So very similar. So empat itu di sana opat, sevo, sevo opat, ya jadi sama ya, jadi banyak banyak kemiripan, nggak usah khawatir, Filipinya hanya nyebrang satu lemparan batu ya. <laughs> so terima kasih sekali lagi all the speaker, Pak Dr Irfan, uh, Mr Thomas Diquito, dan seluruh organizing committee dan mahasiswa. Enjoy the joint seminar. Mari kita awali bersama dengan melafatkan Bismillahirrohmanirrohim. Kurang lebih nyaman maaf. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much for Mr. Muhammad Sayuti, MPD, MD, PhD. Ladies and gentlemen, the next agenda is to deliver academic speech by keynote speakers that will be guided by our moderator, Mr. Nurifai Aksan, MED from Ahmad Dahlan University. But before that, let us introduce Mr. Nurifai Aksan, MED first. He is a lecturer at Ahmad Dalan University, especially in the English Language Education Department. He was the best graduate of the University of Wollongong, Australia. Currently, he serves as the Director of Creative Economy and Tourism Study Center at Ahmad Dalan University and an assessor in tourism at LSP Janadharma, Indonesia. Now, we invite Mr. Nurifai Ahsan MED to guide this session. To Mr. Nurifai Ahsan MED, time is yours. How many microphones do we have? Three? Because we have three people on the stage. Uh, 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Before we start our series sessions, I would like to give and deliver a special heritage for our country, especially for Mr. Thomas, yeah, who is not coming from our country. That is pantun. Uh, as usual, you have to say cakep. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready? <laughs> handsome. Cakep tadi handsome. Okay. Minum kola sambil makan jahe. Sorry, kebalik nggak apa-apa ya. Ini kan yang pantun ya. Ulangi ya. Minum kola sambil makan jahe. Biologi keren jaya lah. Uwadi. As it is very spontaneous, pantun, so I make it short, <laughs> sorry. Because making four lines will think a lot. All right, before we start, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The Honorable, our guest today, the Dean, Mr. Mr. Sayyuti, Mr. Sayyuti, and also, Suyati, Sayyuti, Mr. Sayyuti, and also the Head of Biology Education Department, Bu Novi, Uh, and also all the invited guests, especially the distinguished speakers from Mindanao, Mr. Thomas, and our from local international speaker, local uh, international competent speaker, Mr. Uh, uh, Irfan Yunanto. Uh, he stays in close to my office, but we never meet each other every day. Yeah? When I come in, he is out. Uh, it's happened all the time. And also our most distinguished and reputable Participants in this room, big applause for all the participants. Uh, I'm Rifai, completely not Rifai Asan. I'm going to, going to be the moderator for today's session uh, with the big uh, theme is climate change, also the climate change impact and the mitigations for, offer, offer, uh, offer, uh, for, for anticipating these impacts. And we have a special guest from the first from the University of Mindanao, Mindanao Digos, yeah. Mindanao Digos, and also uh, Mr. Aduh, saya udah pala, Mr. Thomas Junior A. Digito. Because officially in the CV, there is a Junior Digito. Yeah, I give you the complete name. So which one you like, this one or the CV one? The CV one, Thomas Junior A. Digito, and also Mr. Uh, Irfan Yunianto. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is very great, very uh, great honor for me to be moderator here by giving, by uh, taking the very um, strategic um, topic that is about climate change impact and also the mitigations. Before we invite uh, the speakers to come forward, I would like to give you a uh, offer, general uh, overview of the impacts of the climate change. For example, um, the rise of the offshore lines and also of well, what the heat temperatures. If you feel like today you feel very hot, although you are bathing for three times a day, but still feeling, feeling hot, this not because your water is not clean, but because it is the impact of uh, climate change. Also, when in Yogyakarta, uh, we, we, until now, the, 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 rainy, the rain is still like uh, cat and dog raining. It's not really serious raining. It's only 10 minutes short rain, for example. I think it's because of climate change. And the most terrible thing is, do you know what is the most terrible thing of the impacts of climate change? Do you know it? When the, when the uh, tempera temperature is getting heater and the world is getting hot, I'm afraid that the, the most uh, disastrous and uh, what is it, dangerous impact of climate change is the emerging of walking deaths, zombie, ah, because Yeah, this why I, I like watching zombie, and I remember maybe the, why the zombie happened emerging because maybe one impact of climate change. <laughs> okay, so if we want to prevent and avoid the emerging of the walking dead zombie, we need to listen to our the material from Mr. Thomas and also Mr. Irfan. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, before I uh, invite them, I want to give you the rules of our um, seminar today. The first, we will invite the put of the speaker, and the speaker will have 25 minutes for your delivery. Uh, it's very short. I know maybe you need a lot, but we will continue further in the discussion. After, and the first 
chance will be given to Mr. Uh, Thomas. The second will be uh, to Mr. Uh, Irfan. After both of the speakers presenting their materials, it will be followed by uh, QA or discussions for 20 ma 25 minutes as well. This is for me the most, uh, the shortest seminar I, I ever experienced. It's only six, 60 minutes for the whole session. Very <laughs> and very effective and efficient. Okay, uh, without further ado, we will invite our uh, speakers today, pick up pause for the first, Mr. Thomas Tikito. You can take your seats there. Not the mic, only the seats. And also we invite the second speaker from UAD, Mr. Irfan Yunianto. All right, we give uh, preparation time for Mr. Thomas. Anytime you're ready, you can let us know. But before we are listening to presentation by Mr. Thomas, uh, I allow me to read uh, his curriculum fit for the short details. Uh, operator, please show the CV. Mr. Thomas, his name is Mr. Thomas Tikito. Okay, <laughs> it's unreadable, it's okay. This is, if you get minus eyes, it's problematic. But if you have pl plus eyes, it's okay, never mind. And I have the plus eyes then. Uh, he is the teacher in the faculty of University of Mindanao, uh, Digos, in the Digos city, Davao del Sur, Philippines. The latest education of him is postgraduate PhD candidate in Department of Research Administration uh, in the University of Southeastern Philippines. If, I, if we look at the, uh, his CV on short course completed, he is very um, how do you say, professional and very well experienced in urban planning and also design thinking. If you know design thinking is very um, complicated, dynamic method of research and also very interesting because it will have very uh, systematic stages. If you want to know, you can ask Mr. Dafao letter, uh, Mr. Uh, Thomas about design thinking and also urban planning. And um, he has a full experience in a level of uh, studies, starting from teacher in high school, and then teacher in a college, and the last is associate professor in the University of Mindanao, Digos. If you not know, are unfamiliar with the Mindanao location, you can check in the uh, Google map, yeah? in the Google map. And um, she has, um, the, his, his his best achievement, one of his best achievements is he won the second best research presented during the first Asian Society of Researchers, Educators, and Innovations in tw uh, July 2023. I think four months ago. Big applause to Mr. Thomas. <laughs> uh, you know, I joined in many conferences but never win the competition. Yeah, so. It's very uh, reputable uh, achievement, I think. And you can see his contacts. I don't know why he's not having, he doesn't have an Instagram account and also Twitter. Maybe he, does, he doesn't like social media. Yeah? He, he's not a uh, fond of popular person, <laughs> maybe. Uh, you know, these two accounts are very uh, popular in Indonesia. If you have the social, uh, uh, Twitter and Instagram, I can add you in my followers, if you have it. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay, uh, without further ado, everyone, um, ladies and gentlemen, let's send big applause to Mr. Thomas Tikito. Uh, Mr. Thomas, you have 25 minutes to deliver your presentation. Time is yours now. Okay, thank, thank you, sir. So, good morning, everyone. So, sal salamat pagi. Okay. So... Thank you. So uh, actually, I'm very excited uh, today uh, to deliver speech uh, to the um, students or learners of the uh, biology program and as, as well as the faculty members of the biology program. So yeah, my topic is all about the climate change, uh, the perspectives from the Philippines. So 
uh, why this topic? It's because uh, in the current context, uh, climate change is somehow one of the most um, one of the most um, uh, important issues that or issue that we should address. No. Um, I don't know in in, in in Indonesia what are the what are the uh, mitigation uh, for, uh, mitigation processes and adaptation uh, mechanism, but uh, but today I will share to you the the the, per the perspectives coming from the Philippines. Okay, so it's I guess um, uh, for us also for you also to have knowledge uh, what are the practices that we've done in our country. Okay, so uh, next slide, please. Okay, so before we proceed with our discussion, so let me introduce first my country, the Philippines. So uh, the Philippines comprises of around 7,000 islands. When I uh, Google the number of islands in Indonesia this morning, so it is around, around 18,000 or 17,000 islands. So the num or the highest number when it comes to islands, no, the Indonesia, and uh, the total land area of the Philippines is 300,000 square meters, with three main island groups located: uh, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. So the Luzon is located in the northern uh, part of the region, while Visayas in the middle, and Mindanao, the southern part of the region. So. Uh, me, I'm from the Mindanao, which is located in the southern part of the region. So, don't you know that um, in Mindanao, the population there is, when it comes to culture, around 60 to 50 percent are Muslims. So that is why when I when when we arrived last Monday, so I've no. Uh, uh, we've noticed that oh, it's the same with our with our air in, in our area. So unlike in the Luzon, where in majority of the populations there are um, Catholic and other religion. Uh, so in Mindanao, so you when you go there, so um, you can see a lot of Muslims there. Okay, so uh, okay, so okay, so um, as you can see here. This is the map of the Philippines, Malaysia, and other uh, neighbor, neighbor, neighboring countries. So the, the Philippines and Malaysia is somehow close. No? So that is why some of our cultures and traditions maybe are the same, especially um, in the Muslims' uh, traditions and customs. When I go to the museum as well last, the last day, so when I watch the the presentations as well as the discussions. So we are amazed, and somehow we can uh, we can attest that the that the history is somehow the same with our uh, in our in our in our in our area, which is in Mindanao. Okay, so next slide, please. Okay, so going back to our topic, the climate change, the perspective from the Philippines. So. Our island or the, the, our countries is almost identical. So we are made up of number of hand, islands, hundreds or thousands of islands. And climate change is one of those uh, area or subject that we should address, not today, but, in, but for the future as well. Okay, so, and climate change is one of the goal of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And in the Philippines, uh, especially in the higher education institution, we should help the, the Philippines in addressing this 70, 17 sustainable development goals. So number 13 there is the climate action. So that is why uh, climate change is one of the hottest issues when it comes to, um, to environment. Okay, so next slide, please. So what is climate change? So according to IPCC, uh, climate change in IPCC usage refers to a change in the state of the climate that can be identified using the statistical test by changes in the mean or the variability of its properties and, the, and that persists for an extended period, typically decade or longer. So it's different compared to the term weather. So 
Technically, climate is the, the mean score or average uh, like for 10 years and or maybe 20 years or 15 years. So next slide, please. Okay, so in, in our country, uh, specifically in the temperature aspect, so as you've noticed here, like from 1955 to 2010, so there are uh, no data at the moment for 2011 to, to 2023 because they monitor the climate for, uh, for 30 years. So based from the data itself, the temperature, there is an increase in terms of temperature in the Philippines. From 1995, with a difference of uh, 0.4, in 2010, uh, there is a sudden increase of the temperature. And technically, uh, the Philippines and Indonesia, I, I guess it's the same temperature. So if it's warm here, it's warm also in the Philippines. No? So it's, I, it's like a twin, twin country or countries. No, it's, it's the same. Okay, so next slide, please. So why should we care about the climate change? Okay, so this is our main topic. Okay, so first, okay, so hotter days. Okay, so as you've noticed, um, it is much warmer today compared before. You know? So like what my mother said or my, my father said that before, um, uh, the climate before is not that hot. No, or warm, but now it's too much hot no? or warm. So hotter days. Um, in the Philippines, last 20, uh, November 14, 2023, recorded in Aurora, which is in Luzon, uh, lagged the highest ever heat index with around 60 degrees Celsius. So imagine that temperature, around 60 degrees Celsius. So the boiling point of water is 100 degree. And we exceeded a half of that 100 degree Celsius. And during that time, um, in Mindanao part, around 50 to 40 degrees Celsius, there are many students collapsed in their classroom. Like one week suspension of classes in the Philippines. Because there are many students collapsed, not just students, but um, uh, teachers as well and other uh, people. No? So, that's the impact of the hotter days in the Philippines. And by August 11 and 12 as well, uh, the, the same area received around 59 degrees Celsius. While in Mindanao during that time, around 50 to 40 degrees Celsius. And I, uh, I guess it's similar in Indonesia, uh, the temperature. You know, it's hotter. Okay, so next slide, please. Okay, so in, uh, in Mindanao, we experience El Nino. And I guess we are uh, familiar with El Nino. So we're in, um, there's no water like the river in our area. So no water in the river, in, even in the lakes, uh, small water only. And um, the plants, the plants uh, somehow died during that time. And there is a famine in our area. So uh, actually, there is a chaos in, in some of the areas in the Philippines during that time. Uh, uh, around uh, uh, in 2015, in 2015. And uh, during that time as well, there is a record of different diseases like uh, mal malaria and dengue. So we know, we know that dengue and malaria or dengue is, uh, is more on a airborne disease carried by mosquito. And these mosquitoes can, uh, uh, can live in the water or breathe in the uh, water, right? But why is it that there is dengue during that time? That's the question. It's because of improper uh, management of water. Like the people, because of uh, there is no or lack of water, they store the wa their water any, any, in any area. And that air, and that uh, container now becomes the homes of those mosquitoes, leading to dengue and other airborne diseases. Okay, so next, please. So next is the rising sea level. Okay, so 
um, because of the climate change, our polar ice caps or the globe because of the global warming, the polar ice caps somehow um, will be uh, will melt and turn into water. No, so uh, because of this, the, there is a sudden uh, rising sea level, and 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 the Philippines is one of those countries that has a, a an impact when it comes to rising sea level. So next slide, please. So in this data, uh, in this figure, uh, this is the map of Mindanao, and uh, we are located, uh, if I may, here. So this is our area, Digos, and and in this map, so it shows the vulnerability vulnerability map where in the red color or orange color in the map is the highest area in Mindanao. And based from the projection, uh, if, if the planet's planet will, uh, will undergo the, the changes, so um, the, the blue or green color in, that, in, the, in Mindanao somehow will become water areas. So us in, Mind in Digos, uh, maybe uh, 50 years from now or 30 years from now, so no land, so more on water. No? So maybe we will become a mermaid or, or etc. <laughs> so we will adjust, okay? So next slide, please. Okay, so next is this picture. So this is the recent impact of the climate change in the Philippines. This town or this city before is a land this, the, uh, with houses and etc. But for five years only or 10 years only, so it become water area. So it is one of the impact of the, this is one of the impact of the climate change in the Philippines. So the households there uh, somehow evacuated and some of the some of the inhabitants in that in, of that area somehow stay uh, rem or remain in that area, but the problem is the diseases, uh, especially especially the area is in uh, in somehow watery area. No? So and no food as well. So that is that that's the problem uh, when it comes to the climate change or impacts of climate change in the Philippines. So next slide, please. So more frequent and intense uh, extreme weather in the Philippines. So there are many uh, cyclones in the Philippines. No? So if you uh, visit in the Philippines uh, during the monsoon season or the cyclone season, so there are many, many deadly cyclones in the Philippines because of our location. And because of the ha more, uh, more uh, warmer days or hotter days, so we can really expect that there are many deadly uh, typhoons coming from the uh, coming from the Philippines. No, so um, uh, last 2012 we recorded one of the deadliest uh, typhoon in the Philippines, and that is Yolanda. So, uh, have you heard uh, Yolanda before? Yolanda. Okay, so the name of that typhoon in the Philippines is Yolanda. Okay, so next slide, please. So the Yolanda, or 20, uh, 2013, sorry, the 2013 Yolanda. So it cost around 5.8 billion lost in the Philippines. And there are many people uh, somehow who are missing. Actually, the number of casualties there in 2013 is somehow uh, vague and um, different authors uh, argued based on the numbers of casualties. No? So we don't know the actual uh, casualties during that time. And uh, seeing this data, we can say that there are many deadly typhoons coming from the Philippines because of the hotter days, hotter days are, or warmer climate. And aside from that, the damage as well, especially in uh, monetary value, somehow become prevalent and increasing. Like, for example, households, uh, the destructions of households and government properties and, and, and farm and etc. So those are some of the impacts of the climate change in the Philippines. So next slide. Uh, okay, so impact to health. So 
one of the things that uh, the climate change brought to the Philippines is the airborne diseases, since we are a tropical country. And these airborne diseases can somehow affect the life of the people living in our area. So not, uh, not just the airborne diseases, but including the, the like heart attack and many more. So actually, um, uh, in the recent study, there are new diseases in the Philippines that somehow are rising. And before, the, the, main, the main issue is the COVID-19, which, uh, uh, which is the, uh, the deadliest among. No? So, but but uh, some of my students in, in science, science, so they suspected that some of those diseases are not related to COVID. And now, in 2023, uh, their hypothesis is somehow correct. And, and I, uh, I really admire the, the thinking of my students because they are really advanced you know, when it comes. Uh, by the way, my students, uh, some of my students in biology or science um, actually are Muslims. And they are very, very smart, to tell you honestly. They are very, very smart. And uh, last year, last graduation, um, uh, the highest distinction, which is the summa cum laude, I don't know the highest distinction here, summa cum laude, is a Muslim. And that is uh, from the science program. And I am re really amazed uh, with, the, uh, with the performance of that student. No? So um, actually, when I go to the museum, uh, uh, I told mom that I will tell my students that they will come here in Jakarta and visit the museum. No? Okay. So next slide, please. So loss of biodiversity, no? So there are many impacts when it comes to biodiversity, losses of biodiversity. So one of that is because of the acidification, uh, the ocean becomes acidic and uh, fishes and other natural resources are being destroyed because of this uh, impact. Okay, so aside from that, there are uh, um, cyclones and forest fires and many more that could disrupt our biodiversity. Okay, so next slide, please. So what are the initiatives of the Philippine government in response to climate change? Okay, so um, let me share this one first. Uh, when I arrived here in Jakarta, in the, in, in the international airport, I've noticed that there is a sign there or billboard, I guess, in the airport about the uh, planting trees and etc. And I'm very amazed because uh, in our area, in Digo City, we don't have that, no? So I will try to tell my, my, my colleagues there to, yeah. <laughs> and when we go to our hotel, like in the um, route during, the, the, during uh, our, uh, what do you call that one? But uh, there, are, uh, there are many signages, even in our hotel, um, there are many, uh, what do you call this, initiatives. Like, if, if this towel is still okay, so you can reuse it. Uh, because the, every day they will change the towel and the bed sheets and etc. So we follow the order you know, from, the, from the hotel. So th those are the initiatives uh, coming from the Indonesia. And uh, I learned from that. You know? So I will tell my colleagues and... Uh, during the discussion as, as well because I'm teaching environmental science in the Philippines. You know? So I will share that uh, experience here in Indonesia. You know? So uh, kudos to the Indonesian government for that initiatives. Okay, so um, next slide, please. Uh, first is the creation of the Climate Change Commission. So this is one of the breakthrough in, the, uh, in, in terms of climate change initiatives in the Philippines, we, we established the Climate Change Commission. This is a branch of the government wherein the role of this um, branch is to monitor and at the same time to create um, different initiatives uh, in terms of the climate change, including as well environmental literacy and many more. So next slide, please. Next is the 
um, integration to curriculum. So we integrated climate change to, to our instruction. So in the basic education, it is part of the most essential learning competencies. We're in uh, the start of that integration is in, I guess, in grade four level, grade five, grade four to grade five, until grade 10, 12, 11, and 12. In higher education, so next slide, please. In higher education, uh, part of our courses or general education courses is the sci science, technology, and society, as well as uh, elective, which is environmental science. So though there are many initiatives uh, like this one, integration of climate change, environmental education, and etc., but based, uh, based from our different researches, uh, we found out that um, uh, there is a, there is something when it comes to literacy, no literacy, environmental literacy, and etc. And that, that and that is a silver lining for us instructors or teachers in the near future. How can we improve our um, pedagogy, teaching strategies, and 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 strategies to? to relate to our students no, um, how to teach climate change and environmental literacy no, in order for us to become environmental literate. No? So that is something, that is a silver lining, which is um, it's very hard for us no, to teach this one because it really needs a um, conceptual understanding. So last day, mom, I, and I forgot the name of mom, ask about the problem-based learning. Yes, problem-based learning. And mom also share her insights about the climate change and environmental literacy. And we can um, hope, hopefully that uh, in the near future we can collaborate. Okay, thank, thank you, mom. Okay, so uh, it's more on the problem-based learning. It should be the t teaching, uh, teaching climate change and environmental education as uh, as, as my perspective, it should be a problem-based learning. Okay, so next, number three, uh, research grants. So in the Philippines, there are many grants or funds, especially if your study or your thesis, dissertation, it dwells on the climate change, environmental education, creating sustainability, and etc. So... Um, last 2019, the, one of the biggest fund or grant is $10 million. So imagine that amount of money for one research only. So $10 million, no? USA. So it's very big amount. No? So uh, the Department of Science and Technology in the Philippines as well offers many grants and funds if your study is all about um, creating technology that could uh, that could maybe uh, monitor the progress of the climate change and many more. Okay, so that is for the grants. So next, number four is uh, priority areas in the higher education. The higher education in the Philippines plays a, play a crucial role in terms of technology transfer and education. In our, in, in, in our university, the University of Mindanao, we have, he, we have here the research priority areas wherein uh, our students, uh, actually our students there, they have this thesis. No, thesis, um, there is thesis also. Okay, thesis. This, uh, thesis and dissertation, no? so for the doctoral program or postgraduate program. So the research of our students must align to this um, core Areas. So we have three core areas. First is environmental, environment. Second is disaster management. And third is agriculture related studies. So every thesis of our students, or even not just our students, but for us, faculty members, should align to these priority areas like environment, creating um, sustainable, sustainable. Uh, projects and etc. Environmental literacy and many more. But the problem of this is in the form of in the in the language program, in the language program, in the mathematics in the mathematics program, and many in other programs. In science program, it's very easy for us to conduct a proposal or to create ability in the country in the country. 
Combat combating the, the impacts of climate change in the context of the Philippines requires fundings and collaboration among various stakeholders either in local or international level. In addition, the Philippines also focuses on increasing the literacy rate towards climate change among the inhabitants by in integrating environment-related competencies in the educational curriculum. So that would be all. Thank you very much. Thank you for wonderful and insightful presentation for, uh, from Mr. Thomas for sharing information about how the government of Philippines tried to co -op, to cope with the problems of uh, climate change. I note here from Indonesian government, how many points of the strategies? Five points? I think it's five. five, five four. Five, five, five. Five. Yeah, I check in the internet, we also have five. five. Same. That's what we call twin, uh, twin countries. Yeah. <laughs> you have five, you have also have five. Okay, um, Mr. Thomas, in the first session, already uh, spoken about um, climate changes and strategies in the perspective of Philippines. And now we will continue by listening the, from the Indonesian perspective from, uh, from Mr. Irfan Yunianto. However, uh, before we are listening to him, we would like to have a mood booster to challenge and to anticipate and to be also live happily in mitigating the impacts of uh, climate changes. Happiness is one of our weapons to, to face the problems. Especially, because you know, in Indonesia we have ombong. You know ombong? Yeah, ombong means toothless here. No, no tooth anymore. Yeah, some of us already in the process of that way. But you know, actually, it's not really dangerous. In Philippines, Ombong is much more dangerous. It's kind of typhoon Ombong, yeah? <laughs> yeah, typhoon Ombong. Okay, uh, for um, give us the power of uh, fighting against impacts of climate changes, we need to energize and we need to create good energy for our stamina and body. Everyone stand up, please stand up on your place. Uh, if you want, we can also stand up as well. Everyone stand up and um, we have to be happy and move our body. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's different. Okay, uh, operator, are you ready? Oh, wait, wait a minute. Uh, uh, with my signals. Okay. Um, one way to be healthy and fight against climate changes is we have to be uh, happy and healthy. Okay, and now we will show our happiness by showing one of our heritage, Taman Turuk Dance. Okay, I know maybe some of you are not really familiar, but you can dance as you like, like Jagger. Okay, operator, please, Taman Turuk Dance. One more? Oh, one more, one more. One more, Mas. There is no such kind of typhoon in Philippines. Thomas like it. Okay. One more. Ready? Again, if you cannot dance, dance as you like. Dance like Jagger. Everyone. Yes. 
Again, big applause for everyone for Taman Curug Den. There's the risk of inviting moderator as the entertainer as well. Eh? Yeah. Okay, are you feeling fresh and, and ready for the second round now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, before we start, uh, again, we should not agree with the emerging of zombie. So say no to zombie. Say no to zombie. No zombie. No zombie. <laughs> Sorry, I'm addicted with zombie. Uh, before, uh, allow me to read, do you know, is there any zombie in Davao? Hey, sorry, in Philippines? Not yet. Not yet? <laughs> okay. Uh, for admin uh, operator, please show the CV from Mr. Irfan. Mr. Irfan is uh, one of the lecturers in, uh, in English Education, <laughs> no, sorry, Biology Education Department in WAD. Uh, he was born on Magetan 9 and June 1981, uh, he's got a lot of experiences in the education and last time he was graduated from, uh, he already finished his PhD scholarships from LPDP, big applause for Mr. Irfan. <laughs> why, why ask you to do so? Because I know I tried to apply LPDP but not, not successful yet, it's very hard to, to receive the, uh, as a as a recipient of LPDP scholarships. So I have to learn a lot from Mr. Irfan. Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, now let's complete our knowledge about uh, mitigation and also impact of climate changes by listening to the presentation by Mr. Irfan. Mr. Irfan, you've got 25 minutes to go. Please go ahead. Uh, do you want to start with uh, Taman Juru Dance again? No. <laughs> I'm not much of an entertainer but I hope that I can do something else. Right. So before giving my talk, can I just ask permission to deliver my talk by standing up? Yeah, sure. But that doesn't mean I'm going to do stand-up comedy. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not gonna roast anybody here. Stand-up, not comedy. Yes, yeah, stand-up, not comedy. Maybe it's just to release my tension. I'm not <laughs> sure it is getting colder here, or is it just me because I'm starting to be so nervous? <laughs> All right, because it's already 9.30 and it is usually for coffee break time, but since there's no coffee at all here, and thankfully, uh, during my talk, I used to move a lot, and don't be surprised if in the middle of my talk, I would be outside, okay? <laughs> all right, so actually, uh, Sir Thomas here already described many things. I think it's a complete, uh, aspects about the climate change and why it is, this is really important. This is one of the core uh, topic that is being discussed worldwide. And even if you saw the news yesterday, our president, yeah, Mr. Jokowi, he met Joe Biden, President of the United States, and apart from the uh, talk about the uh, proposing of the ceasefire in Palestine, uh, Jokowi has also discussed about the climate change issue. Again, so this is the proof that climate change is very crucial issue for us. Not only to understand, but also to make a mitigation, to make a real action, how to deal with this climate change before it gets too late, before we are having the serious impact for us, right? So, and I chose this topic uh, specifically, its effect on human physiology. Well, eventually, the effects of the climate change, especially the, uh, uh, you know, regarding the temperature, the rising temperatures, which have the direct effect on us, on our health, yeah, but I, maybe it's just an excuse for me to avoid any, uh, you know, questions regarding the clinical aspects, because I'm not a clinician, right? But we can still discuss as long as it is still related with the human physiology. Yes, uh, next please. Right, so as you may have been aware, the climate change is definition. So it refers to the long-term shift in the temperatures and weather patterns. So it's not always about the rising of the temperature. But again, it can also refer to the lowering of the temperatures. And 
many of us and mostly we what we are experiencing in our daily life is the uh, you know the up and downs of the temperature sometimes it happens at the in a short term but the climate change refers to the long term of the shift of the climate itself and it can be natural actually when it is caused by an external factor like the sun's activity large volcanic eruption and also the extra planetary objects like the comet or maybe asteroids which has the trajectory near the earth so it could, it could affect the climate as well uh, but this thing the climate change refers to the long term like for example we have experienced the weather the hotter weather uh, getting hotter and hotter and especially uh, maybe last two months yeah, when we haven't had any rain. But thankfully, we are so happy that we already start to, to enter the rainy season now. All right, so actually since 1800s, human activities have been the main driver that promotes the climate change. So it's not about the external factors, it's not about the uh, environment, anymore but it's mostly the human activities which cause the climate change next please right so for the example uh, the clear example is the burning of fossil fuels can i just ask you anybody who biked to the campus you bike to the campus awesome you mean bike right bicycle motorcycle okay anybody who use motorcycle to the campus i don't believe it maybe almost all of us <laughs> all right so i should i i may should change the question anybody who walk to the campus wow one two three four okay anybody all right six walk to the campus maybe you you live just uh, 100 or 200 meters away from the campus, that's good. But I think most of us, either we bike, not bike uh, using bicycle, but motorcycle, or uh, we drove, we drive the cars, or uh, any kind of vehicles that use fossil fuels. That means congratulations, we contributed to the climate change. It is inevitable in our daily life, unless we have electric motorcycles, maybe, or electric cars, which is very expensive. And I think, I don't know, but the, I think the, uh, the most, uh, less, the, less, the least expensive, I think, the least expensive uh, electric cars is around 200 million. So, oh, with the subsidy from the government. So, 200 million rupiah is around maybe 15,000 US dollars, I guess, around 15,000 US dollars. So it's still very expensive for us, right? You can go uh, to the you can go to the Hajj or Umrah <laughs> uh, with that amount of money, right? So using gasoline uh, for our motorcycle, for our cars, and maybe not the second one, coal for heating a building because we live in a tropical country. We mostly, not, we, we are not using the heaters, mostly we use air conditioner, which is also the electric comes from the power plant that use fossil fuels, that's the problem. And also the agricultural activities, uh, which produces greenhouse gases. Anybody knows what greenhouses, greenhouse gases are? Anybody? Yes. What are they? Just mention one or two or 11. <laughs> yes, what, what are the gases considered as greenhouse gas? Uh, carbon dioxide, uh, metana, nitrogen dioxide. Awesome, that's enough. Give applause. <laughs> yeah, that's right. See, carbon dioxide. We breathe in, we breathe out. We also produce carbon dioxide. So in order to avoid climate change, don't breathe out. <laughs> Just breathe in. It's impossible, of course. And 
methane. What do you think? What methane comes from? Did we breathe out methane? Unfortunately, not. Yeah. Fortunately, no. Yeah, not us. But the cattle, yes. Uh, next, please. Right. So there's an interesting article I found on the internet, right? Which is bigger methane source? Is it the cows pelting, you know? Uh, you know what pelting is? Burping. Like if you drink uh, soda and then you burp, uh, something like that. <laughs> that is called pelting. Or cow flatulence. You know what flatulence is? Should I demonstrate what flatulence is? A passing gas through the back of our body, which has quite smelly <laughs> odor. Fart. Kentut. Maybe we don't realize, but cow does fart. Cows does fart. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. I've tried to find out how it sounds, but I've never been able to find out when the cows fart. So I think we need to do more uh, or longer observations. <laughs> but an interesting thing uh, based on this article is that actually the, it's not the, when the cows fart, but it's when the uh, cows are uh, burping or belting. It, that produces more methane. You know why? It is because of the internal uh, physiology, especially the digestive system. We know that cows has four uh, stomach, right? The rumen, reticulum, omasum, and abomasum. And especially in the rumen area, the cows, you know what cows eat? Sapi makan apa? Huh? Masa nasi padang. Exactly. So whatever the cows eat, it will be processed in the rumen, in the, in, in the stomach, and then the, not only the bacteria, also the protozoa or any kinds of microbes there will produce the methane as a byproduct. And it will be released in the open air. That's why it contributes, I forgot the number, but it is very significant percentage of the methane in the environment. So you know what's the basic uh, characteristic of methane? If you want to know, uh, then you can observe when the cows fart or when the cows pelt, and then you can light up uh, a match. Nyalakan korek, light up a match, and you will see that the fire is blown. So that's the indicator of the methane uh, presence. Can you imagine how many, or uh, I don't know, uh, was the total population of, of cow in Indonesia if they farted together at the same time? Maybe our country will be blown up <laughs> due to the amount of methane. Right. Uh, next one, please. And interestingly, there's a research. Uh, I don't think this is a new one. It's, it's not uh, because I read the paper in 1995, and it's been published for quite some time, and it is still uh, being uh, a trend. How to reduce the methane content in the cows by manipulating the cow's feed. So I read. I'm, I didn't read the whole paper, but uh, one of the article and the paper I read was just to reduce the number of the protein around 10% and then mix with a special made of the uh, pellets or the concentrate, it will reduce the methane concentration uh, in the cow without reducing the milk quality. Because of course, uh, farmers, they want to increase the quality of the milk from the cow. But the side effect is if they didn't modify uh, the cow's feed or the cattle feed, it will also produce high number of methane. So we can modify the cow's feed. Uh, next one. All right, so climate change is a real threat to human well-being and of course to our health. So we have been talking about the uh, 
increase of the temperature in our daily life, and it can seriously uh, affect our health directly or indirectly. But yeah, the consequences is not only to the uh, our health itself, but also to the environment, which eventually affects our uh, overall health, including not only the physical health, but also the mental health. I will show you in a minute. Next one, please. <clears throat> All right, so we have been talking about the uh, source of the pollution of the green house gases, which uh, contributes mainly to the climate change. And we always uh, assume that by driving a car or uh, uh, riding a motorcycle, we, we, we burn the fossil fuel, we burn the gas, we create an unhealthy environment. But actually, that only contributes uh, lower amounts, lower significant amounts yeah, to the climate change. But uh, more majority, in majority, the, the sector that produces uh, much more uh, pollution, which creates, which contributes eventually to the climate change, is the industrial area. So anyone who lives next to the factory, you might want to consider to move to another part. But it's not that easy, the problem, right? So actually, it needs regulation from the government to uh, make like a solid plan for the industrial area to be separated from the you know, residential areas and the offices as well. Uh, maybe in theory, it's true. Yeah, but in reality, sometimes it doesn't really implement it in the field. Uh, next one, please. All right, so we are now talking about the direct impact on the human health. As you can all see in the diagrams here, apart from the environmental aspects or social behavioral as, uh, aspects, there are the climate change directly affected to the health outcomes. For example, the heat-related illness or the cardiopulmonary illness and also the factor prone diseases uh, up to the mental health consequences for the human being. Next one. All right, so I'm gonna talk a bit more about the heat related illnesses. And maybe some of us has already experienced this, but maybe we, don't, we just don't realize it. And some of the symptoms are so serious that you need to seek medical attention. If you experience only light symptoms, we doesn't really affect you from doing your daily activities, maybe it's okay. But if you feel that it's getting worse and worse, you need to seek medical attention. Right, for example, it's heat stroke. You know what heat stroke is, right? You know a uh, patient with a stroke, usually it's, it, can, it comes from the ischemic stroke or it could be hemorrhagic stroke, which has the bleeding on the, you know, uh, on the brain. But it's not the case, this one, uh, comes from the heat outside of, or, or the external factor or in the, from the environment. So we, if we experience uh, excessive heat from the external uh, environment, we used to call it uh, hyperthermia. So if you feel uh, my body is too hot and I'm starting to feel dizzy, I can't do my activities properly, I have to lay down, I have to drink water more. Maybe at this stage you are experiencing the heat stroke. But there are some other uh, symptoms as well that you need to check because like the nausea and then confusion. Can you imagine if you are uh, exposing to a uh, significant amount of the heat, you can be confused. You can be confused of yourself and then passing out. That can happen. If that case, is happening, then you really need to seek medical attention or you need to help other people who are experiencing it. And then heat exhaustion. Maybe uh, the degree is a bit lower compared to the heat stroke. So this is like feeling uh, extremely tired or fatigued due to the heat. And I bet this uh, affects us almost every day, especially if you are exposed to the heat uh, during the day. Yeah. 
and we are so lucky uh, because like if you, for example, uh, it will take you like one hour or maybe just half an hour of uh, motorcycling from your place to the campus. Yeah, maybe it's quite a long time, but whenever you get to the campus, you get inside and the cold weather or from the aircon, of course, it will lower our internal temperature. So we are uh, protected from the heat exhaustion if we are staying inside. Yeah, so we need to lower down our temperature. And then the next one, please. All right, heat cramp, sun per heat rest. I'm not gonna be uh, very details on this because uh, we have a uh, time constraint here. But like the sunburn, you know what sunburn is, right? So my suggestion is always, yeah, whenever you have outdoor activities, just please use the sunscreen. Use the sunscreen, yeah? But the problem is, because we have the obligation to pray five times, yeah? In the daylight, for example, at Zuhur time, and then you go for ablation, taking wudu, right? And then after finishing offering a prayer, you can reapply the sunscreen. It will protect you against the heat exposure, especially from the sun, because what's really dangerous is the UV rays, right? The ultraviolet rays from the sun. Uh, next one, please. All right, so the other impacts of the climate change into the human health is the air quality. And of course, it will directly affect the cardiopulmonary uh, diseases or cardiopulmonary issues. And of course, the factor prone disease. Next one. So how does air pollution affect the lungs? This is pretty much do 